Hello everyone, welcome to the video. Today we are gonna be going over a few reasons we really love to boondock in the desert southwest. Getting right into it, our very first reason is there are no reservations required and there's plenty of open space for everyone. Which is perfect for us because honestly, we really don't like planning ahead and we like being spontaneous. And every time we do go to Florida for the winter, we certainly need to spend more time planning ahead, booking those reservations in advance so that you have somewhere to go. In this video, we might be picking on Florida just a little bit. It does have a lot of great things to offer, but we kind of are really feeling this desert Southwest vibe. And currently we are at American Girl Mine in Southern California. And this is the first time we've been to this particular boondocking spot. And we really, really have enjoyed this past week. It's actually quite similar to Quartzsite on the surface level, but we really think it's got a lot more going on than Q does. Yes. <laughs> But similar to Q, this is one of those areas that are big and flat and wide open. So this type of boondocking will cater to almost any type of rig out there. Big, small, and everything in between. It's not the type of small areas that you have to worry about. Can I get my big rig under the trees, down through the trail? It's really, really that wide open desert Southwest. And I think that really appeals to a lot of people. It's easy yeah it's almost like a place you can come and just uh, figure out boondocking a little bit if it's your first time doing it it's a great place to start it really is and along with easy it's also easy to come in any day of the week for example some places you really don't want to go in on a friday afternoon because they'll be all filled up well here you could roll in friday 3 p.m no yes. problem yeah the entire week that we've been out here there's just been such little activity in this big area that we're at. I would say there's maybe a hundred rigs out here, but because the space is so big and there's so many areas for people to kind of claim their own little spot. It's really hard to tell. It really is. And it's been quite enjoyable. Next up, we are gonna talk about the weather out here. The beautiful, beautiful, sunny weather. It has very mild temperatures for January right now. Our highs are in the 60s, maybe low 70s and the lows are in the 40s and 50s. And in true desert winter fashion, the sun is the king here, where as soon as that sun comes out, you get toasty and golden, and then as soon as the sun dips away, you do get a little bit chilly. You're gonna have to put on a big hoodie, maybe a light jacket on those evening walks. And that actually makes it good for fireplace weather. Oh yeah. Whether you like to have open fires if it's allowed in the area you're at or a propane fire pit like we have where it gets dark around five o'clock and you can still have that nice little campfire at night. Fire! It feels like desert in the winter once you put that thing on. I made fire. Where's Wilson? <laughs> It's also really gentle on your propane. For those of you that are a little bit tight on the propane, such as Aaron, we always try to pinch pennies. You really don't need to blast your heater very often. We find we give our heater a quick blast in the morning just to get out of that warm bed. Um, and it helps us wake up, but it doesn't take long, maybe like not even five minutes of heating. And then the whole area is pleasant. Yeah, it is actually so comfortable. We do our morning walks, I would say around seven o'clock when the sun kind of comes up and it is a little chilly then, but you put on a hoodie, maybe a jacket. I'm still wearing shorts right now and it's just, it's super enjoyable. And by the end of your walk, the sun is out, it's warm, it's kind of toasted everything up and it's great. And then when we're working all day inside our RV, because the temperatures don't reach that, you know, 80, 90 degrees, it's really comfortable in the RV. And if you just crack a little window, you get that nice cool breeze. Yeah. And it is such an enjoyable place to spend yeah. a week. No AC needed. And I think the dryness definitely helps with that as opposed to the humidity on the East Coast. So with that low humidity also comes the great savings of water when you're talking about showering. 
Yes, fresh tank management is definitely a little bit easier over here because you're not sweating daily from that humidity. And even light exercise, like we exercise every day, whether it's running, jogging, walking, weight training, all of the above. Some of those you can get away with on the West Coast and not need to shower. So like weight training, perfectly fine to get that done without getting doused in sweat. Same as walking. The only time we really need a good shower is after a big trail run. Yes. And because we're not showering every day, we have plenty of water to allocate towards those, like I definitely need a shower moments. So of course the good shower uh, management military style, uh, you know, still comes into play when you're out here boondocking. And another reason why we went with such large tanks on our small travel trailer is so that we can shower comfortably and we don't have to make them stretch out, you know, three days. We can shower every, every other, other day, day and be really, really comfortable. And that leads straight into our next perk of being out here for the winter is the outdoor, the nature, these small mountains, big hills, whatever they're classified as. Wide open spaces. Wide open spaces. We love being able to just leave our RV and go straight onto a trail run without having to drive somewhere or even worse, run the pavement streets. Like we really just love being able to take some of these trails, even though they're not really like labeled as trails for hiking, they're still great for exercise. They're super convenient. They're beautiful and they're right here. It feels like most Western BLM land is designated for some type of outdoor activity, whether it be OHVs and side-by-sides, dirt bikes, things like that, or even just hiking and walking and like mountain biking. And there's all types of fun, open stuff to do out here. And we have no problem finding miles and miles of open space to just roam. Yeah, and we actually even ran into an old gold mine the other day. Mm. which was super fun. So this, you... this is called American Girl Mine <laughs> for a reason. There is a mine. Next up, we have to talk about the bugs <laughs> or the, the lack, lack thereof. Of. You cannot talk about the West and not mention the fact that there's practically no bugs out here. It's like this little secret that they don't let everybody know because over in Florida, there's some bugs that are the size of your head. You don't even know what they are. They look prehistoric. I think everybody does know that the bugs in Florida are vicious. I know, but why is Florida so popular? It's tropical. I don't and know. And they have bugs. And the bugs really do attack me personally. Yeah, not to mention like the mosquitoes and the biting gnats and the flies and things like that. Out here in the Southwest, it is so amazing. We've been uh, full-time for four years now, we have never seen a scorpion. We've never seen a rattlesnake. And we've only seen two tarantulas. I think the most prevalent animal that we're aware of out here is the coyote. Coyotes. Which is actually quite magical to listen to those coyotes yeah. howl and yip at night. And in the wild, the coyotes, they kind of stay off in the distance, it seems like. Uh, it will. We've been to an RV park uh, in Southern California where they're a little bit more domesticated, if that's a, the right word for it. But I mean, they were literally in the campground in the middle of the daytime. These coyotes were walking around. They're and, a little more protective of their turf there. Yes. So I just think that's an amazing factor. And it seems like you, you kind of just forget about the bugs. Like when you're out here, there's, there's just barely little flies, barely ants. I mean, it's just, it's amazing that there's just a yeah. rodents, rodents in general. Like, we've never gotten a mouse out in the desert. We usually get our mice in Colorado, uh -huh. um, North, South Dakota, like the the grasslands, the wooded areas. They are That's, here. We've seen we've oh, seen they're here. them outside, but we've been lucky. They've never entered in to our RV here. All right, let's talk about the abundant sunshine for solar out here for a minute. It is amazingly sunny almost all the time. It rarely rains out in the desert, obviously. Mm -hmm. There's really not that many cloudy days. And even though it's the winter time and you have shorter days and you have that lower angle of the sun, there's still plenty of sun to be sucked up by your solar panels. <laughs> Now there's a few things you could do to help with that lower sun angle too in the winter time. Lots of people do tilting panels or they do portable solar panels. Uh, but we have 1200 watts that are flat up on the roof 
and we do have to worry about that sun angle. We actually just experienced a lot of shading in our last uh, campsite that we were at in Anza Borrego. And that was just due to the way that we were parked because we have more solar panels on the one side of our RV than on the other. Yeah. So thankfully we're still able to boondock for a week without any worries. And we're able to use some of these fun appliances. Yes. I definitely use my air fryer, I use my hair dryer, I use my vacuum cleaner, and those appliances don't stop just because we're in the winter and we're out in the desert. I definitely keep using them every day. And last, we are gonna talk about the easy access to Mexico. Which we did by foot recently for the first time. I know a lot of people like to go over the border. They like to go for fun or they like to get their teeth cleaned or they like to pick up some things, and we went for tacos. Yes, we went to Molar City, or <laughs> Los Elgadones, which is just 15 minutes south of where we are at, at our boondocking spot here at American Girl Mine. And that was a really fun experience. We used to go to Mexico quite a bit for vacations, back when we were in our home and working our corporate jobs. And this is the first time we've been back to Mexico in many years. Yeah, it definitely was a fun trip. It's easy to do. It's easy to do on foot and it's easy to do for a lot of our beers in their RV to take that over. We haven't done that yet either, but it's certainly an option if we wanted to one of these seasons. Yeah, and we're starting to notice a big trend of RVers starting to migrate south in the winter time for a lot of the reasons we're talking about here today. Mexico, just south of the border, has a lot of the same great things. Yep, so one of these years we're gonna do that and it's definitely um, a fun way to kill the winter. It really is. But if you haven't heard of walking across the border for your dental work or your prescriptions uh, in this, small tourist city of Las Algodones. Uh, it's, it's quite amazing. It's a fun experience. It's an easy day trip. You can do it in a couple hours. Parking is safe at a Indian reservation. You pay it's like $6. $6 to park there. And then you literally just walk right across the border and you're in Mexico, which you can go do those things like get your teeth cleaned for 20 or $40. Super, super cheap. So we, of course, went across with our friends, Jeff and Deb, and we had to go get some tacos and authentic Mexican food. And so we found this great little restaurant that they've been to many times, actually. Yeah. And it was good. It was fun. We each ordered what we wanted. So there was enchiladas, tacos, quesadillas, lots of chips. We had some margaritas. We sat down and it was just, it was a packed place actually. They had some chicken on the grill in the background that was smoking and yeah. smelling up the entire block. I think that's part of the draw that brings people in is just that paprika chicken just like making you drool. It's just one more fun thing that you can do uh, down here in the Southwest. Yeah, and you can pick up some knickknacks. I brought home some tortillas. I brought home a bottle of wine and that was it for me. What else do you need? That's just the basics, right? Thank you so much to everybody who watched today's video. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Yes, and a very extra special shout out to our YouTube members, which are Patty Capel, Michael Nally, Floyd Byerly, Karen White, Deanna, Michael Malone, Ether S, Stephen Radford, Nevada Fly Angler, Carmen Cloud, and Jim Sherman. Thank you guys so much. If you want to learn more about YouTube memberships, check out the link down below where you can get such perks as early access to new videos, member shout outs, priority response to comments, current photos and status updates, and even live streams. Thanks everybody for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.